Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And there's a lot going on today. Take a look at this. Cardano unveils their first automotive project in Davos. Binance has apparently been named counterparty of platform in illegal funds case. One billion dollars worth of crypto has been sold by Peter Thiel's fund after holding for eight years. And apparently Ripple CEO says the Hinman emails will bring to light reasons for the SEC action. You have to understand, we on the channel here follow the SEC's actions closely. That's how we also knew they violated some privacy laws earlier, and apparently that half of their enforcements in 2022 were against ICOs, and we have a full breakdown of the different sort of cases that the SEC has brought in time. Anyway, apparently Cardano is going for an e-tuk-tuk project that will begin in Sri Lanka with support of the local government. I forgot to say at the start that we also have the National Australia Bank, who is launching a stablecoin fully backed with the Australian dollar, officially, that seems to have positive connections to Ripple, Algorand, and Ethereum. We're covering that in just a second. Anyway, hopefully you guys will know what a tuk-tuk is. Let's call it a vehicle of the sort that you can kind of see right here in the in the picture. And the e tuk tuk has never really worked because usually where a tuk tuk is necessary or wanted or custom, there's not really that much of a charging culture for that specific vehicle. Now, apparently e tuk tuk plans to address the lack of charging infrastructure and the high cost of these vehicles in developing countries by building a dynamic, multifaceted revenue model. And in doing so, the P2P economy is intended to incentivize the expansion of the highly scalable e -tuk -tuk network of charging stations and e -tuk -tuk owned e vehicles via the Cardano blockchain. Apparently, the Cardano blockchain is expected to play a central role in driving sustainable change in transportation solutions and combating financial exclusion. Sorry, guys, combating, not combinating. Apparently, drivers and users of e -tuk -tuk will be able to use the Cardano blockchain for transactions in order to pay for services services without the need for cash. Further, the ecosystem uses Cardano blockchain to allow drivers, passengers, and other participants in the network to earn rewards. It also allows them to benefit from the increasing use and expansion of the e tuk, -tuk charging infrastructure. The project expects that the amount of income earned by drivers could increase by up to 400%, which could be insane. That obviously is a very cool revelation. To get back on track here, if you're wondering why the National Australia Bank uh, launching a stablecoin fully backed by Australian dollars is a good thing for crypto. Well, apparently it is powered by Algorand and Ethereum. So that straight of the bat is a very good deal. And apparently, if we take a look at some of the articles from a while back, we can see that an ex-Ripple executive is basically heading over, or is in Australia, to kind of oversee the Australian CBDC projects. And multiple different connections for this has been connected to RippleNet, either through the new ISO 2022 standard or ah, whatever. You just have to understand there's a lot of connections that we found to Ripple and I'm still investigating exactly what all of those are. Just know that I noticed, wow, a lot of people are talking about it and a lot of people were rooting for an Australian CBDC of sorts. And so for this to come out to this degree is a pretty big reveal, especially seeing how they're connected to cryptocurrencies. I expected that they would completely say, hey, if a stable coin, it's on our own chain, our own everything. But no, it is not. So that is peculiar. Anyway, moving on, Binance named counterparty of platform in illegal funds case. All this has to do with is the Bizlato action that we saw earlier. Again, this was the biggest letdown of yesterday where everybody thought that the Department of Justice was going to announce some crazy, crazy action. And all of a sudden, the action was against a company that nobody's heard of before. Point being, apparently Binance was named uh, among the key counterparties to Bitslazo, which has been accused of processing millions of dollars in illegal funds. And yeah, Binance apparently provided substantial assistance to international law enforcement partners in support of this investigation. This exemplifies Binance's commitment to working collaboratively with law enforcement partners worldwide. At first, yesterday somewhere, I was skeptical as to why Bitslazo was being dragged to the dirt if they were to some degree processing these dark web funds because I thought, hey, they might not know. But apparently two thirds of Bitslazo's top receiving and sending counterparties are associated with dark net markets or scams. Damn. That's what the uh, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network FinCEN of the Department of Treasury wrote in order. Apparently, it, it named Binance as the top receiving counterparty by total amount of Bitcoin between May 2018 and September 2022. According to the document, Hydra, a Russian connected dark web uh, market, and the Finico, a Russia based scheme, were listed as second and third. 
The top three sending counterparties during the same period were Hydra, local bitcoins in Finland, and the Finico, the Treasury Department document showed. Local bitcoins didn't immediately reply to an email for comment sent outside regular business hours, and Bitslato, a Hong Kong registered entity, has significant ties to and connections with Russia, uh, which added that there's more concern for money laundering, yada, yada, yada. But pretty interesting how this is uh, rippling through the crypto market. I didn't expect it. Anyway, $1 billion worth of crypto sold by Peter Thiel's fund after holding for eight years. Enormous profit made by Fund of Man, who rooted for further adoption of Bitcoin while quietly selling it in the background. Apparently, Peter Thiel's founder fund successfully sold a billion worth of crypto with a significant profit. Most interesting part of the story is Thiel's speech at the Miami conference when the venture capitalist explained how advantageous Bitcoin is while being out of the crypto market for good. Apparently, by March 2022, the company has generated $1.8 billion dollars for selling most of their crypto holdings most of the company's investment consisted of bitcoin and technically Thiel's fund sold bitcoin at one of the best prices available as it would tank to fifteen point five thousand dollars later this year however during his speech at the conference he did not really hint or mention the fact that their fund has sold most of their holdings on the contrary the investor urged attendees to expose themselves to bitcoin because of the value it brings to the table Thiel also brought up the fact that Bitcoin is in fact undervalued at that time when he was selling. Initially, San Francisco-based Founders Fund bought Bitcoin back in 2014 when it traded under $1,000 and held it through two bull and bear markets. The fund then successfully sold its holdings at the top uh, local top and does not seem likely to return to the market in the foreseeable future. Damn, that's uh, the opposite of putting your money where your mouth is. Despite the most recent recovery of the crypto market, almost all institutional investors that were present in the industry a couple years ago have now left the market and are sitting on the sidelines, which is cap. That's not true. Even though the majority of institutional investors that I've spoken to here are not investing as crazy as before and are trying to sit on the sidelines, the majority of crypto VCs we had before are still exposed to crypto. They just expect a major recession to come. That's the majority of institutional investors I've spoken to. They say a major recession is still going to come. Things are going to crash way further. And for that reason, they want to sit back a little bit. But that does not mean that they've de-exposed themselves from crypto altogether. All right, guys. Now, but before we move on, let me quickly tell you about yet another project that I'm investing into. You have to understand, I try to invest in new projects almost every single day, as you can be wrong many times and you only have to be right once to make some crazy return. I think it's the best approach to crypto, but it's not financial advice. Whatever I buy, you don't have to buy. I'm just sharing my journey and sharing my knowledge with you. Whenever I buy into a project, it's a calculated choice. And for my risk profile, it is worth it. That by no way means that I think this product specifically is going to surely do well. I see potential in it, which is why I'm sharing it. Well, let's quickly talk about it. The project in question is called Leva Network, properly audited by Certic. And simply put, it's a yield optimizer with a very lucrative referral program. Meaning that if you got their token, you're basically going to share some profit with them. But on the side, you can also just get money from the referral program that's in place. It's a very common thing. Just to give you guys an idea as to what it would look like, even though right now in the pre-sale, as again, guys, I try to buy only into pre-sale so we get the best of the best price. You're basically able to generate yield, logically a relatively low TVL as of this point, but that's because everything is still pretty early. Please understand, guys, I invest into a new project every single day. This one I found because Crypto Jack, one of my friends, was talking about it. And since yield optimizers usually are a very nice hit or miss, they either do extremely well, get a lot of adoption to make a crazy return or don't perform at all it's a good risk to reward in my opinion and like i said they have a pretty attractive referral program as well which as i check out here might actually be five levels deep meaning if you refer your friends and they refer their friends and so forth and so on you can still get rewards for that which usually is only when a company starts out because afterwards it's going to be too expensive to maintain but with yield optimizers usually it's possible as they don't give the highest of percentages and they just give away a percentage of profit that they make it's not a set percentage that everybody's going to get it's a percentage on the profit but yeah as i said guys i'm buying into it as well i came across it and it looks pretty good but as i said never put all your eggs into one basket and just take a look for yourself yield optimizer with the token we get a share of the revenue and also governance token but i care mostly about the revenue share oh, yeah that's about it anyway let's talk about ripple so one of the most important things i just have to mention real quick is that we earlier had a big discussion 
of whether or not Charles Gasparino, the Fox reporter, was right or if we're right. And it was mostly regarding the fact that the William Hinman emails, who was a ex-director of corporation finance at the SEC, he basically had some emails back and forth with SEC members regarding crypto and the way in which he should write it in his speech. Now, Ripple CEO just says the Hinman emails will bring to light reasons for the SEC action. And this is a direct interview that he had, or I guess speech that he had over in Davos, where he mostly just discussed, I can't play it right now, but he mostly just discussed, he can't really wait for all these documents to come out. And that makes me think, because I believe Ripple has seen most of the emails, right? It's just not really for the public eye. And apparently he says, Bill Himmon, the director of corporation finance at the SEC, gave a speech in June 2018 about ETH having been a security, but has magically not become a security. And there are some emails associated with that. And when those come to light, I think you'll see more how it is possible that the SEC decided to bring a case against Ripple, given what they were saying within their own walls. And again, as far as I understand, Ripple has seen the majority of things they needed to see, but it's not for the public just quite yet. So that could be interesting. That could be a little hint. Anyway, in addition, Gollyhouse criticized the SEC's regulation through enforcement. Quote, this n is never an efficient way to regulate. If you want to regulate, do the work and write the rules. And if a company comes to you and says, hey, help me understand the rules. I want to make sure I follow them. Help them understand the rules, which indeed the SEC has not been doing. And he, he comes back to the point that the SEC met up with Ripple multiple different times. And not once ever did the SEC mention to Ripple, hey, your XRP might be a security. And again, if you're wondering, we expect a decision early in 2023. But Brad Gunn has expected it to happen within single digit months. Again, we in the community expect it to happen within the next three months because of the judge's agenda. But we'll have to see exactly how that goes. As we all know, the SEC likes to delay things, so probably as we get closer towards the end, the SEC will think of something to delay it even further. As again, we don't think they've been doing a good job for a very long time right now. Uh, very recently, I covered that they were violating some privacy law when investigating a firm. They basically had an email sent to people that were using the platform to ask them questions, but they failed to BCC all the 650 users in an email. So it was basically for everybody to see all the other people's email. So names and emails were um, leaked. And we've also seen before that indeed they are going for this regulation by enforcement method, not rulemaking process, which is sad. Anyway, though, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you press that like button as it is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today or maybe tomorrow. And yeah, thank you all so much for stopping by and saying hi. Also, if you're still looking, there's exchange links down below to, for example, Bybit and BitGet. Those are exchanges that I personally use. And also grab yourself a VPN like NordVPN and a ledger. A link for that is also down below.